What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Well, actually, it's evening time. It's the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night, December 17th, 2022. It's about 8.33 p.m. here along the West Coast, so technically evening time. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe looks like a 2.2 on the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out that activity here first. See what's going on out here in the Pacific Ocean, where we're still seeing a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity out into the region. Let's go ahead and check this out. Make sure I got the latest map there. There we go. Uh, into the Pahala area. Nothing really showing up here across Mauna Loa or the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, currently, looks like most of the activity down there around the Pahala area. Now, I do want to check out the latest informational statement here on Mauna Loa and go to their site so I can uh, do a little bit of investigating here and see what's going on. Uh, we'll look at a couple seismograph stations and see uh, what's being reported out here and maybe what's not being reported. Now, look at the seismograph station over the past 12 hours. still shows that um, oddball earthquake activity that I'm talking about. A lot of very small microquakes here in this area. This is at the summit level of the Mauna Loa volcano here. Now uh, I got the crater up here at the summit and a couple tilt meters and some gas emissions. But the majority of these stations here around the summit area still have that little uh, distinct swarm look to it. As I just showed you guys here on this map. This is the past six hours. You guys can kind of see that in there as well. Those are very small microquakes, but there's a lot of them. And this has been ongoing here for, oh, about a week now, a little bit over a week since the eruption stopped. Not started, but once it stopped, then we started to see that uh, earthquake activity kick up a little bit. Uh, the latest tilt meter, let's go ahead and zoom in here and see what we got here across the uh, tilt stations, tilt meter. Still shows some inflation here over the past week, about the 10th, when the uh, volcano there stopped erupting, we started to see those inflation rates elevate. Uh, not a significant amount, but definitely noticeable across the board there. So, latest informational statement there from Mauna Loa. We'll check this out real quick, see if they've uh, put out an update here yet. Um, there we go. This was put out on the 15th. So these guys are not going to do an update unless something changes up there. They put out one update every, probably, I think they're going to do one week now. So no, nothing changed. Still looking for uh, uh, something to go on up there. I mean, it's just kind of an odd deal to see two earthquakes stop at once, see inflation rates elevate at uh, both volcanoes there, Kilauea Volcano and Mauna Loa, and seeing that earthquake swarm up there at the summit. So we'll continue to watch it. See how it plays out. Uh, one earthquake up here into the Idaho area, just outside of the Smith's Ferry, Idaho area. 2.2 coming in within the last hour. And just off of this little fault system up here in Idaho, Squaw Creek Fault, north of Boise. I uh, haven't really seen too much activity here around our Sawtooth Fault System area that we normally look for. Uh, it's a little bit further east here around Stanley, Idaho. So... A little bit of activity though, kicking up here. Uh, Yellowstone National Park had some activity as well. Um, one earthquake over here, it looks like it may have been centered around the Maple Creek area. That's going to be this earthquake right here. Nothing showing up across the USGS map in regards to that earthquake. That's not going to be this one, uh, but nothing here within this area. And most of the time USGS will only report 2.5 and above. Even though this is the all magnitudes map, they still only, um, the preliminary earthquake data systems there only put out earthquakes if they're over 2.5 uh, until someone reviews them, which would probably be Monday morning. All right, West Coast activity uh, around the Cascadia. Some movement uh, looks like this activity here from today. One earthquake outside of Redding over here, northern end of the Sacramento Valley. Uh, and also one earthquake here this afternoon into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. This area has been showing a little bit of surface quaking uh, in this area upstream of the slip of the uh, trimmer that we see down there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone and other areas. The trimmer map tonight, by the way, shows about 76 epicenters up here, total amount, uh, and mostly into the Northern California area. 
So we have been seeing some uh, uh, dipping here, so to speak, with some stress building up there, producing some of those earthquakes. Uh, obviously, this tremor, not a huge amount, but we are seeing the effects of it upstream uh, and kind of pretty much in this level here over the last couple days of uh, some earthquake activity, mostly small quakes, but overall a sign of pressure building up out there in the Northern California region. Around the Bay Area, we've seen this earthquake this morning uh, near El Cerrito, 3.6 coming in. Guess it was felt by quite a few folks out there. Uh, occurring about 3.30 in the morning or so. Here's the Did You Fill It map all over the Bay Area. Of course, a highly populated region here. Looks like North Berkeley. Uh, some light to potentially moderate shaking early this morning uh, within that area of that uh, 3.6 today. Further down south, a little spotty activity as we get down um, to the Garlock Fault shear zone. We are seeing a little bit of activity on the San Andreas Fault. This is the southern segment. Um, a couple, well, a couple small microquakes here. Looks like most of that kicked off around 10 o'clock this morning. Haven't really seen anything pick up further uh, following this activity, but it is right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. And that is the, the I, I should call it the sleeping segment because it's, well, it's been over 300 years since the uh, rupture down here of the southern segment. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of strain built up there to produce a big earthquake very soon, I'm sure. Uh, some movement out in the uh, Oklahoma area as well, well just uh, northeast of Woodward. A couple small earthquakes out there around the Red Hills. And uh, Texas got some activity as well outside of the Midland area. That was from yesterday. The Atlantic Ocean is an area that has seen some movement here today, kind of uh, sparking up a little activity out there around the Rec Janes Ridge. Charlie Gr uh, Gibbs Fracture Zone, just north of there. 5.0 and a 4.6 and some further activity kind of uh, away from the plate boundary here in an odd area, 5.0. Uh, well off the coast here of Morocco. And let me see what we got for historical data out here. Just kind of a one of those oddball quakes. You know, these things, uh, every once in a while we'll see them. Most of the earthquake activity is going to be around the plate boundary itself, which sits up north. But uh, historical, haven't really seen too much activity here um, since about 1900 or so. Nothing showing up within this area for 4.5 and above. Maybe one way down south here, but we don't see that activity all that often. So a little strange, odd one out there. Uh, further east, Romania, seen a 4.4. Uh, that one coming in late last night. Not a whole lot going on throughout here across the uh, rest of the world. Um, looking at the earthquake 3D globe here, kind of confirms that. Uh, some older movement quakes here within the area, but no swarms, no major um, unrest or movement across the Mediterranean or any areas further east along the plate boundaries, northern India, down through the uh, Java Trench. Southern end, though, and into the Indonesia area is where it's all kind of popping off right now. Quite a few threes, quite a few fours, all clustered up in that area. Also down here along the Kermadec Trench, we're getting some activity as well. So some movement uh, noted here on the board. I zoom in just a little bit here. Uh, again, mostly around the Papua New Guinea area over here and also the Indonesia region. Now further down south into the Kermadec Trench, we've seen some smaller quakes here and also a 4.9 into the Kermadec Islands area, 10 kilometers deep. New Zealand region. Go ahead and check out New Zealand here real quick. Uh, bring up the GeoNet earthquake map and see what they're reporting. Uh, seven hours ago had a 3.1 North Island, New Zealand. And let's go to the all magnitudes map here and see what we have. A couple earthquakes here over the last couple hours. There's one deleted event and 4.9 well north. That's going to be the um, that earthquake there around the Kermadec Islands uh, being reported. So not a whole lot, uh, but there is some activity kind of kicking up down there around New Zealand area. A look at the volcanic maps here. Shows some activity. Uh, looks like around... Oh... I'm not even for sure how to pronounce that name. Um, wasn't really in the position to pronounce it, but this is where that activity 
uh, is occurring. A couple small earthquakes there at this area, at this drum, not at Taupo Volcano. Uh, Taupo Volcano looks pretty quiet here on that graph, uh, but this other area definitely showing some small earthquake activity uh, within that region. All right, uh, let's move on here. Uh, I'm going to cut this short. The solar ham site is down, by the way. Um, they've been having a, uh, a security issue, and I've noticed that whenever I visit their site. It's been taking me to these weird, questionable sites, um, and that's not good. So they have shut down their webpage uh, to deal with the security issue. Uh, they're still up on the Facebook and Twitter page. Uh, but also you can find all the space weather activity uh, from the SDO site. Um, stand by for just a second here. Need to get a couple different links up. Uh, Timothy does have a pretty decent page there. Um, but I do want to check out the SDO site here real quick. Um The X-ray flux chart from the SDO. I need to have this saved here from the Space Weather Prediction Center. I thought I did, um, but I will here now. I'm going to take that and just scoot it right here. That way it's up there on the map. This is the latest uh, space weather activity here in the solar flare department. Notice things are starting to die down a little bit. That's due to the uh, that big sunspot that's produced over 35 M flares over the past couple days. It's a pretty big event. Uh, has turned away from Earth, so it's no longer picking up direct flares, which is kind of making it look a little, looks like it's dying down a little bit, but it's still pretty active. We did see some M flare activity from a new developing sunspot. Now that uh, that sunspot here, let me see if I can pick it up here real quick. Is on. Yeah, I need to. Uh, this kind of goes to tell me this kind of goes to show you how often I use the uh, solar ham site. I use it quite a bit. Let's go to the SDO NASA site and uh, check out many different images here of the sun. Uh, there is a chrono hole that is currently facing us here right now. That big one, uh, but not too big. It's just, uh, I think within view of Earth, it may be geo-effective. Doesn't look like it's going to be uh, that much, though. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to come back and look at this in a little bit more detail because um, these are not my typical images that I use up here um, to check out the flares. So we'll definitely check back on that in a little bit later. Uh, Space Weather Live has a pretty cool site as well uh, when it comes to their data. I don't use it all that often, but every once in a while I do. They just have like this stuff that pops up here and not a big fan of that, uh, you know, but I get it. They, that's the way they want to run it. Uh, current solar wind stream speed is somewhat low. KP index currently around the one. The Aurora forecast up here looks pretty bleak. Not a whole lot of potential here uh, on their graphic. And the, yeah, just they don't have a lot of the stuff that I'm used to showing here. But uh, we'll get back to that either way. We do have the, um, the X-ray chart showing the current solar flare activity. And that's kind of the main thing right now. Keep an eye on that. That's current. It does update. That's from uh, direct from the um, Space Weather Prediction Center, folks. So and we'll keep keep checking on the Solar Ham site. Been using that site for many many years. So uh, sad to see them down. Sad to see somebody messing with them. But they got to get that fixed. Can't be having their traffic redirected to spam sites. That is not good for them. All right, uh, all right, guys. I'm pretty tired. Uh, me and Missy Mimi's were up in the mountains today in the snow, uh, like literally three feet deep. Um, I'd fall through the snow on occasion. Wasn't really uh, expecting that. So I'm kind of worn out today. Um, pretty cold up there as well, up around Mount Lassen. i uh, got quite a bit of snow, and most of the park is closed up there right now. Uh, so couldn't get back there to the... Um, 
the hydrothermal features, the uh, mud pit, mud pots, and the uh, boiling water out there. The certain uh, uh, areas are uh, closed off. They did have that major fire a couple years ago, the Dixie Fire that burned through the park. So a lot of the areas closed off, unfortunately. But I uh, did get to see some snow up there. I uh, didn't see any earthquake activity, uh, but just hung around and uh, soaked up Mother Nature for a little bit. It was a pretty, a pretty pleasant but cold uh, experience up there. It's always good to get out and uh, do a little bit of stuff with nature, but I, I don't know. I, it, was a, it was a little bit chilly. I wasn't really quite prepared for the uh, uh, extreme cold and the super deep snow up there. Either way, folks, have a good day. Stay safe. Have a good night. I'm going to bounce out of here. We'll be back tomorrow sometime with a update. And uh, take a look at those um, sunspots at a different site here. Because um, it looks like maybe Solar Ham will be down for a little while. Catch you guys later. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out.